Hello and welcome back to the railway. Today we're going to have a look at the high neck, model number R758, first announced in 1966. But firstly, we're going to follow the Barnstable, model number R2235, back to the sidings with this rake of southern coaches. Now she's an ex-Hornby 00 model, and she was available from 1961 by Hornby 00, but she appeared one year only in the Triumph Hornby catalogue of 1966. This was the first annual catalogue featuring the new Triang Hornby name. So Triang Hornby were left with a number of Hornby 00 models in stores to get rid of. So they simply sold these excess models in Hornby 00 boxes with Triang Hornby stickers on them. Just closing points nine there, the crossover and opening number 11 at the station. And out comes the high neck model number R758. She was announced in the catalogue in 1966, but didn't become available in the shops till 67. When she did arrive, she was in this wonderful two-tone green livery. She remained this way for just the one year. In 1968, she was electric blue. She changed again by 1970 to rail blue, and remained that way until 1976. Just coming through points number seven there, the crossover, and we'll close those behind her and into the third radius curve, approaching the incline. Now she appears to be coming up here without any problems whatsoever. She does have the magnesium, which makes her a very powerful model. She comes in quite a smart box with this cardboard sleeve. We've got the model number R758, Timec BB diesel locomotive. And we've got that on both ends, and we'll just slide it out. So she is rather impressive in this two-tone green livery with white windows. And she does come with an original instruction sheet. And she's got a model number here, R758, and the date 091167. It's quite nice to have these things. So let's pop the box down and we'll, we'll have a quick look at the instruction sheet. It's a fairly general instruction sheet. It's not really specific to this model. And it covers the entire range. We'll just flip that over and have a look. The other side, there are different chassis and motors and so on, and the all important address at the bottom there. The model's held safe inside the box in this vacuum form tray, and a quite nice touch is the model number incorporated into it R758. Looking down the side of the locomotive, that lime green band running along the bottom really is quite distinctive. We've got white window frames at both ends, and these are separately fitted plastic parts. These do include details for the tops of the handrails which run down both sides of the door and they're recessed into the moulding. Quite a pretty moulding. We've got the door handle here. We've got louvered vents right the way down the sides in different sizes. Some of them are picked out in white. We've got windows here and here. And we've got this lovely BR Randall which is just applied to the side of the body. I'm not sure whether that's heat printing or a transfer. Looking down the other side of the model, we have a slightly different configuration with these small vents and small windows as we run down the side. Looking at the front end of the model here, on the cab roof we've got two horns moulded into the roof. We've got the separately fitted window frames. We have a running number of D7063. And on the front end here we've got two separate paper labels, one forming the warning panel with white lights incorporated into it, and the other forming the root code. The buffer beam is separately fitted and then the buffers, which are metal, are pushed into that. And we've got Triang's D-shaped coupling here. And just looking around the side here, here's the hole in the side of the body moulding, which the, the chassis clips into. At the other end of the model, we don't have the hole under the cab door for the chassis to clip into, but we do have this root code here, which does form a clip to help hold the body onto the chassis. And again, I should have pointed out earlier that the paper label on the other end does seem to have been glued back into position, this one also possibly not quite in line where it should be. Looking from above, we can see we've got the horns moulded into the cab roofs at both ends of the model. Looking down the roof, it's painted grey, and we've got a number of little bits of detail picked out here and there, and a very large vent. Now I've removed the body, and it's a little more difficult to remove than it should be, I think. It's um, got a, a clip in the chassis here, which pokes through a hole in the upper part of the body moulding, and the securing screw goes through there. This is a very tight fit and it's very snug under here where it fits through the head code into the body moulding. I think with repeated removing you could damage the body quite easily. So 
So we've got a weight screwed directly to the chassis there above the dummy bogey. We've got the motor bogey here and it's held into the chassis with a spring clip there. We just lift that up, we've got an interesting sticker on the other side of the chassis. I'm not sure whether this has been repositioned at some time. It says, do not unscrew, lift and slide the spring clip to release power bogey. And there is the spring clip. I'm imagining that sticker was originally perhaps stuck on the body, on the chassis here. And that arrow gives us the indication of which way to, to slide it. So I'll just remove that spring clip and we'll, we'll have a look at the, the motor bogey. So we've got a Mark III motor bogey here, first developed for the Bud rail cars in 1962. This is a variation of that with different side frames. So this is the Mark III B. So if I lift that up, we can see the, the magnesiums nice and strong there. So it gives it plenty of pulling power. Just pull that off the track. And we've got this lovely brass plate on the bottom here holding the magnets in place there between the drive wheels. We have a look, we've got plastic drive cog mounted on the axles. The axles on these wheels are plastic and they sit into the side frames either side. And I've just got white grease here to try and ease the friction a little there. And we've got the trying D-shaped coupling there riveted onto the bogey. Just a swift look at the underside of the chassis here whilst we've got the motor out of it. We can see we have no pickups on the, on the dummy bogey here. We've just got pinpoint axles and reasonably fine scale wheels for the period, I think. And we've got Trying Hornby's name there. I don't know whether we can just see that. And then we've got built-in Great Britain and the model number R758. We see the, the buffer beam detail, as we pointed out earlier. It's just a separately fitted part and it's glued in and then it has metal buffers pushed into those as well. Quite a plain buffer beam. Just have a swift look down the other end. And that just protrudes through the body to help hold the whole thing into place. The window frames on this model, as we said earlier, are separately fitted and they seem to be held in place by the glazing unit, which is glued to the body mold. We'll just move along and have a look inside. We've got other, other glazing strips just glued into place there on both sides. And we've got that glazing unit at the other end, just like the other. We've got this hole in the side here and that helps secure it to the chassis. And again, we've got to be careful with the damage there. It could uh, cause quite a bit of damage if we're not careful. It's a bit, bit tighter than it needs to be, I think. And we've got the hole in the other end there where the root code protrudes through from the chassis and again holds the whole thing together. The Hymet was also available as an assembly pack between 1968 and 70 catalogue number R396. There was a presentation set with three Freightliner wagons between 1968 and 70, catalogue number R645. And in the early 70s, there was the senior freight set RS602. She seems to have been quite a popular model, lasting well into the Hornby Railways period. By 1977, she'd returned to the two-tone green livery. This time she was model number R074. She stayed this way till 1979. I think it's probably time we had a look at the coaches in detail. These chocolate and cream Western Region coaches were only available for a short time, between 1960 and 1962. This is page nine from the 1961 catalogue. We've got the brake coach, R329, composite coach, R330, restaurant car, R331. So there were nine inch coaches, Here's the restaurant car. Running number's quite worn on here. I think it's got W301. We've got these wonderful curtains. The roof detail there is excellent. You can see the tables are all set. Restaurant car, and nice big letters on the side. Underframe detail on all of these coaches is the same. It's got Triang's name, made in England, and we have sleeved wheels. Let's just have a look at those. 
open axle boxes and try and this D-shaped coupling. Pop that one down. The brake coach also has a ribbed roof, bowed ends, has a periscope detail. Detail at the end of the coach there is quite nice. Same underframe detail, sleeved wheels. And we have a running number here of W34302. Pop that down, have a look at the composite. This is the only one of the rake that has seating unit fitted to it, apart from the restaurant car, which always came with a seating unit. We've got the ribbed roof, bowed ends. Oh, we've got the running number there of W15771. And that seating unit, this is the corridor side of it. it has a slight blue green tinge to it. And have a look at the other side and the seating side. You can see there through the windows. Now it does say at the bottom of this page that seat units to fit these coaches are detailed on page 11. Time for one last run I think. We've got the electric locomotive R753 sitting there waiting for action. The coaches do look quite smart together and the Hymex is going to move away uphill with all those coaches now. Gently away. Effortless with that magnesium giving it that extra grip. Now I have managed to get the coloured light signals working and the switch wired up on the point. So as the Hymet comes around the layout, we'll have a look at that in action. Terrific coming across the bridge there. Easing off the power a little bit on the way down the incline. Very smooth. And up towards the signal now. And the signal's gonna change as the point changes. And then the electric locomotive's gonna move off nice and smoothly through those points. Break of four blue and grey coaches there and we'll close the point and the signal changes again and off goes the high mech. Both running on the same line now. Smoothly away and we can hear that electric locomotive coming back around and up the incline. It really does look excellent going off into the distance there. I think that's about it for now. I'm going to leave you this time with page two and three from the 1966 catalogue. There's a great illustration of the Hymet. This was the year she was first announced. If you look back again next week, we'll have something else from this trying all the period. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.